Hey everyone, today we're replacing a two-handle shower system to a single-handle shower system. And all of this work will be done from inside of the shower since we have no access from the back. This is probably the solution for you if you rather have a single shower system or in some cases you no longer can find cartridges and stems to repair a leaky shower. Let's begin by taking off the handle, which is quite simple. All you gotta do is remove these caps and then remove the center Phillips screw that's in each one of them. Then we have the tub spout. Each model is different. Mine is a twist off. So after cutting the silicone off of it, I'm able to twist it off and remove it. Some models may require you to remove it with an Allen wrench located in the bottom. You then locate your main shot off and you make sure that's on the off position. To remove the stand, you have to break loose this retaining nut. After you break loose with the channel locks, it should come right off. Sometimes they do get stuck, so you may need to pull them off with a pair of channel locks. Now we have to remove this tub spout extension. Your case may be different than mine, just remember that either way, this needs to be removed so you can replace the valves. I super recommend you protect the inside of your shower or tub with either an old towel or painter's drop cloth. All right, so what we're doing is we're installing one of these remodel cover plates. Uh, this gives us the ability to cut a hole big enough to remove the two handle system and install the single uh, handle system in this setup. Now real quick, I'll, I recommend you apply some blue tape on this so you can mark it, cut it, and uh, not damage any of the tile. Okay, you grab the plate, you line up with the valves, make sure it's level. Then you just sketch it. Now, you do want the hole about half inch smaller so the cover can grab on the tile. Grab yourself a grinder and slowly make your way around making the cut. This shower has ceramic tiles. So I'm using a diamond blade to cut through and be very careful not to go in too deep into the wall. It's time to chisel out the wall. This is pretty simple. Take your time and little by little chisel everything out of the way. You may find yourself with one of these wire meshes which you could cut away with a sawzall or any other power tool, but it does provide the risk of cutting the pipes inside the wall. I recommend cutting them off with just a pair of cutters or tin snips. All right, now we have our hole cut. Uh, we're ready to start working on the pipes. And here's why I recommend you getting a old towel or a painter's rag like this, uh, because all the debris is here, and all you gotta do is pull this out, bring it outside to dump it. Let's replace the drop cloth and get ready to work on the pipes. Start cutting off one pipe at a time. The remodel cover provides just enough room to work on. It is very difficult cutting, especially in the supply lines coming from the bottom. You just have to be creative and most importantly, have one of these auto cutters. If you can't get them to rotate by hand, you can use a pair of channel locks to help out. And on top of that, I needed to notch out this piece of 2x4 that was in the way of the pipes. Take your time sanding and deburring these pipes really well before moving on. Time to cut and dry fit the pipes. There are two things you want to pay attention here. One is that after you dry fit each pipe, I recommend you marking which one is which. I ended up mixing them up when I pulled them off. 
that's not too big of a deal. But the second point and the most important one, it's that if you have room, unlike what I have here, you must center the valve as best as you can to the hole. And you see why in just a minute. You prep the pipes really well, reassemble everything back on, and it's time to solder. Just before we start soldering, I suggest you spray water on the back of the boards, on the 2x4s, anywhere around that may catch on fire. And another suggestion I have is that if you do not own a fire shield, you can make your own with aluminum foil paper. This is a very handy trick that you can use if you're not comfortable soldering in tight spaces. Time to solder. Just take one fitting at a time, don't rush it, and let the heat do the work. It is time now to test for leaks. Replace the plastic holder into the valve, the cartridge goes second, and then the retaining nut. Make sure the retaining nut is on tight. This is sufficient for you to turn the water main on. And after the main is on, use the handle to turn the water on, letting the flow and checking for leaks. After you test it, it's time to install your tub spout. Now, uh, each model has a different approach. This one actually comes with an adapter. So you want to solder this adapter into the pipe and then you insert your tub spout. And the specification for this one is that they want this at least a quarter inch from the wall so we're gonna cut it right here solder this adapter in there and then twist it before you solder remember to remove the o-ring otherwise you melt and you're gonna have to find yourself back at the hardware store Let's remove the tape and clean any of the surface off. Install the remodel cover onto the wall and assemble the shower valve back on. So here's the final product. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get this as center as I would love to to the plate. Uh, this plate does give you enough space to work on, but it's very, very tight, as you saw, uh, especially when the pipes come from the bottom and you want to make a connection right there. Um, I would love to have lowered this down a bit, uh, but then um, I, didn't, I didn't have enough space to put a couple and lower down other than cutting the wall even bigger. So let's go ahead and put the O-ring on the tub spout. And uh, as you can see, this is barely enough to give to insert your, your tub spout. The manufacturing requirement for the uh, uh, the shower faucet says that you want this tub spout at least eight inches away. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that here as well without doing major work on the tiles. And the purpose of this uh, video is to show you that you can salvage your tile. Uh, using this plate and this is probably a scenario that you can get by again not the cleanest but it's a solution for you uh, let me know in the comments what you think um, you would do different on this scenario uh, would you use uh, shark bites or change over to packs maybe cut that hole a little bigger I probably could have cut a little bigger but again um, I didn't want to sacrifice too much of the tile work um as always check your work for leaks before turning it on and then uh, one last thing here is uh because i have tiles here i am going to uh, add some clear silicone around and as well around the tub spout
And that's it. I hope you learned something in this video. It was informative to you. And then I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Is, doesn't that say clear? That doesn't look clear to me. Oh well.